Hello and welcome back to the second part of my painter build. Today I will do the painting and weathering. I hope you enjoy. First I am covering the model in a coat of black primer. I am using Vallejo's Mecha Primer Black for this. It is easy to apply and creates an even surface for the following paint. After the primer has dried, I am applying the base color Dunkelgelb. I used AK's Dark Yellow Primer for this, but the paint caused some problems with my airbrush. Later I switched to Vallejo's Model Air Dark Yellow, which worked a lot better. The paint has to be applied in multiple thin coats for the best result. The tracks get some AK Primer as their base color. For the rubber on the road wheels I am using Vallejo Black Grey. Thinning the paint makes the application easier and has a smoother finish. I decided to create the famous Hinterhalt or Ambush color scheme. Masking Putty will allow me to use the airbrush for this and still get the sharp edges I want. In the first step I am covering all the parts that will remain yellow. The putty is very flexible and can be worked perfectly around edges and details. Now I can apply the first coat of green. Here I used AK RAL 6011 Reseda Green. But the green was too light for my taste, so I later switched to AK RAL 6011B Reseda Green. After letting the green dry for around 12 hours, I reapplied the masking putty for the red parts. This time I used AK RAL 8012 Rot Brown. Both colors were part of AK's 3rd gen acrylics. The same two steps have to be repeated for the hull. Here the putty really shows its advantages, because it would take a lot of time to carefully mask all the tools and accessories. And in the end there would still be overspray you had to correct. Due to the size of the hull I had to use some additional masking tape this time. The masking can now easily be removed without any residue on the model. The putty helped to create a way better and faster finish than I did with the hand painting on the Gepard. With the airbrushing finished it is time to make the spots. Here I first used the wrong green again, but I fixed it shortly after. I think a brush works better for this than an airbrush stencil, because it makes the spots all look slightly different from one another, which closer resembles the real camo. The green dots are for the yellow parts, while the red and green parts receive the yellow dots. I wasn't sure if there should have been any red dots on the green, and I could find any reliable source for this either. This took some time to cover the entire tank like that, but it's incredible what kind of a difference it already made. With the camo finished it is time to move to the detail work. To make the tank look used some chipping is the best start. I am using some lighter yellow and a small brush to go over all the edges that would see wear. Reference can really help in this step to determine where to apply the chipping. Any parts that are moved or where tools and crew would move over are a good start for wear. With a sponge and a tiny amount of paint I can create very small and random chips on the plates and raised details. This step always looks weird and out of place, but you have to trust the process and the next steps really shows why. With a fine brush I apply some German grey inside all the larger chips I just made. The lighter color now highlights the darker chips while blending them into the rest of the camo for a realistic look. This is one of those steps that can take multiple hours depending on how detailed you want the end result to be. But for me it is one of the most rewarding steps since it adds a lot of detail while not being overly complicated. The accessories and tools require some brush painting. I am using gunmetal for all the metal parts and buff for the wood. The towing cable gets a base coat of gunmetal as well. With the basic painting finished I can now move on to the decals. 
since only a small number of decals were included with a few crosses and numbers for the turret, these were quick to apply. Since the exhausts have to be rusty, they first receive a layer of cell brown. On top of that I use some orange brown. With some tap water I blend the color and create sort of a wash. While the orange brown is still wet, I apply some even lighter orange rust thinned again with tap water. I then sealed the whole model with a coat of gloss varnish to prepare it for the enamel effects. A dark wash is used as a pin wash. The gloss varnish helps to let the enamel wash flow around and into all the little details. Any unwanted stains can later be removed with some white spirit. It's a very basic method, but it helps to highlight all the small details and create fake shadows. After the pin wash has been cleaned and dried, I use a filter called Tan for Three Tone Camo made by Ammo by Mick. This will unify the three different colors and give the effect of some dirt or dust. Now it's time to make the tank dirty. The lower hull gets a thin coat of Vallejo Earth Effects Russian. It's an acrylic based paste that I use primarily for the underlaying color and texture. Its thickness can also help to hide some gaps or unwanted pin marks. I just have to be careful to not put any mud where I later want to attach the wheels to. Some additional mud is added to the lower part for more texture and build up some variation. The lower plate gets most of the dirt in the corners, as that is where most of the dirt and dust would accumulate. To create color variation, I am using an enamel effect called Kursk Soil. This lighter wash is applied all over the previously added mud. Just be careful to let the acrylic mud completely dry, as acrylic and enamel based products don't like each other unless completely dry. I then use some different brown pigments and put them directly onto the wet enamel effect. This will help fix the pigments. Most of this won't even be visible in the end due to the wheels, side skirts and tracks. But I like some nice mud effects and it would bother me to know that there is no mud behind those tracks. Speaking of tracks, they still look clean and need the same treatment as the rest of the tank. I am using some rust pigments and an old cheap brush to apply them all over the tracks. I then take some track wash for Mick to fix them in place and tone them down a bit, as the rust pigment is way too bright and would look unrealistic on a vehicle currently in service. The wheels get a pin wash to begin with. Here you can see how the wash flows around all the details due to the gloss varnish. The same pigment mix I used on the lower hull is used here. I just put them randomly all over the wheels and adjust them with a small brush to my liking. Because I want to keep the pigment color, I have to use some clear pigment fixer instead of an enamel wash to glue them. The fixer will dry to a matte finish in the end. Now it's time to finally put the tracks and the chassis together. Looks nice already, but there's still stuff to do. The contact points on the tracks need to look like bare metal without any rust. For this I am using Revell Aquacolor steel and a fine brush. Now it's time for the side skirts. After a black primer and a dark yellow base tone, I use some pliers to carefully bend and damage them like I did in the first part. In the beginning I wanted to scratch build them out of thin metal, but that didn't work out and I had to use the ones included with the kit. With enough damage applied to look realistic, I can use some super glue to attach them to the tank. Since they are still missing the ambush camo, I have to go back to brush painting. I just use the existing color patches and some thinned down paint to expand the pattern. This time I even used the correct green shade from the beginning. Because they are already bent and damaged, I of course have to add some bigger chipping and scratches. These are applied in the same fashion as the chipping of the hull and the turret.
The spare tracks have been primed with track primer and can now be added onto the brackets with some super glue. My scratch built add on armor has received a base coat of Settle Brown and can now be placed into the desired position. To make them look more rusty, I am using a few AK weathering pencils. I used the colors Dark Rust, Medium Rust, Light Rust and Strong Ochre with the lighter tones in smaller amounts. They can be activated with water and used with the pencil itself or a brush. However, being water-based, they do not work well on a surface with enamel-based products. Otherwise, I really enjoy them for work like this. Here you can see how they pull up on a surface that is just clear varnish and how you need more work to get an even coverage. A coat of matte varnish is applied and it's time for the final additions. I want to add some additional items including this Panzerfaust 60 and a Kar 98K sniper rifle from the Tamiya German Infantry Weapon set. I then made some simple tops using some tissue paper. I covered them in a mix made from water, PVA glue and acrylic paint to get a weathered and dirty look. The glue will help to harden the top once it's dry. I let the top dry for some time but not completely. Then I can add it onto the tank and start folding it. I use more of that mixture to press the top down and keep it in place. You can also roll them up before adding them. If you put tarps underneath crates and barrels, it makes them look more realistic and better connects them to the model. If you want a more in-depth look for any of these, let me know in the comments. For the barrel I use a net made from fly screen painted with olive green. I can just put it onto the barrel and fix it with some glue. Since an empty net looks kind of boring, I'm adding some leaf mix with PVA glue all over the camo net. For some additional foliage, I painted a few sea foam twigs brown, added glue on top of them and put them into the same leaf mix I used before. Because the side skirts are still clean, I am adding some mud splashes using AK Splatter Effects Dry Mud. I can use some water to blend them in and soften them. For the more finer splatter effects, I am using Ammo by Mic Turned Dirt Splashes. Keep in mind that the AK effects are water based and these MIG effects are enamel based. Now all that's left is to add some black pigment onto the exhaust and we are ready for the final reveal. I really hope you enjoyed this build as much as I did. If yes, please leave a like on the video and subscribe for more content. Any suggestions or feedback, please let me know in the comments below. I may find the time and space to create a diorama for this one too, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching and until next time, goodbye.